So it is fantastic to be here and to listen to the fabulous talks. And I believe uh, every presenter has its own motivation why to become an innovator. My, my, motiv my motivation is based on my experience with cancer patients. I had to tell my patients very often that we have nothing to offer for treatment for, of their cancer. And, uh, and this, is, this is a message that many patients with advanced cancer receive. And one of the key questions to, uh, uh, which is connected to innovation, innovation in this field is why billions of dollars are spent every year and still uh, for patients with advanced cancer, uh, cure is the exception, not, not the rule. You will hear many reasons uh, for, for cancer treatment failure, but all of these reasons come back to a root reason. Cancer is based on genetic mutations acquired in healthy cells, and this genetic mutations, this changes this changes, this changes of, uh, of the genome uh, uh, happen sequentially, so, so many mutations are acquired in a random fashion until cancer is established. And this random nature of this mutation has two consequences. One consequence is that every patient has a different cancer. The second consequence, consequence is that every tumor cell within a cancer is a different entity. And this tumor cell, tumor cells in an advanced cancer, these are at least one billion different cells. They are able to travel, they are able to overcome uh, the treatment effects, they are able to colonize new, new organs and metastasize. The way how we treat cancer today ignores this complexity and is not able to deal with the plasticity of, of the cancer. The question is, is there a solution for that to deal with this complexity? So we believe yes. So there is another system which is, which is even more complex than cancer in our body. It's our immune system. Our immune system is composed of 1,000 billion, billion cells. There are many, many different cell types which collaborate together. And one fascinating cell type are T cells which are able to travel to the body, which, are, which have a scanning function, which can divide and, and multiply and attack, attack in, in high numbers. They have even a memory function and able to, to memorize information for decades. So these cells have an amazing another function which is relevant for cancer treatment. These cells, these T cells, can recognize mutations which are presented on the surface of tumor cells. So that means the cells are able to discriminate normal cells from tumor cells, and the cells are able to kill tumor cells. But they do it very rarely. The reason for that is that our immune system is not evolved to attack our itself, but is uh, evolved to um, attack pathogens, so that means uh, infectious non-cells. So the question is, can we redirect these T cells and, and exploit their, their functionality for treatment of individual patients? So here's our concept. Our concept is based on three pillars. First, we identify all cancer mutations. That means the mutano, to map the individual uh, ma uh, genetic makeup of the tumor. The second is to select those mutations which are representative for all tumor cells. And third, we prepare a vaccine which, is, which uh, informs the immune system, immune system to, to recognize and, uh, and precisely kill tumor cells. So this is the concept, and this concept, even though it's a simple concept, means a dramatic change how we treat patients. For the first time, we need to, to get the genetic information of the tumor and make a, a drug for the patient, and we have to do it just in time to avoid that the patient, uh, the tumor is progressing too fast. 
The simplified, uh, simplified view on this approach is shown here. We first need material from, from this patient. This can be acquired in a normal hospital. Actually, we need a tumor sample and we need blood to be able to compare normal and tumor cells. We, do, we use next generation sequencing, which allows us to, to analyze the uh, DNA of the, of the normal cells and analyze the DNA of the, of the tumor cells. And by this, we can identify the genetic changes in the tumor. We can we also sequence messenger RNA to identify which of these genetic changes are active in the tumor cells. Second is we use we use, um, uh, we use um, um, c uh, computerized algorithms and machine learning to predict those mutations which have the highest probability to induce a T-cell response and which, has, uh, which cover the whole tumor. The, the algorithms that we developed provide a list of mutations, mut mutations including the chromosome position and inclu including the probability score whether the mutation is going to induce an immune response or not. This computerized list, which is generated by machine learning, is verified by experts. And if validated, we proceed to production of a, of a vaccine. We use for vaccine production a genetic, genetic vaccine, which is based on messenger RNA. Messenger RNA has two important features. One feature is we can produce messenger RNA fast. We can produce this in a few days. The second is it's a natural molecule and ideally suited, suited for delivery of genetic information. Then the vaccine is delivered to the clinical site where it is applied for, uh, by, by the physicians to the patients. I have a vial of such a vaccine which was prepared for an individual patient. It looks like a normal, normal drug vial, but it contains the genetic information of the tumor of the patient, and it comes with additional instruction what the immune system should do with this, with this information. So when we, when we started this approach and validated this approach in preclinical models and moved then to clinical studies, the first question was, is this, is this approach able to, uh, uh, to induce T cells, stimulate T cells? Is it safe? Uh, we treated only 13 patients, and in the 13 patients, we have seen that every patient responded uh, with T cell responses against, against the mutations that were delivered to the patients. In total, we used 10 mutations per patient, individually selected. Most importantly, when we analyze the immune responses against, uh, against uh, these mutations, we realized that most patients didn't have an immune response, pre-existing immune response against, against, this mute, uh, against uh, the cancer mutations. But after, after uh, vaccination, several, several rounds, the patients developed T cells. So this is only 4.8% of T cells, but if you, if you calculate the number, these are billions of T cells that have been generated by these vaccines. And we were able to show that these T cells are able to recognize and kill tumor cells in vitro. We had only 13 patients uh, who have been treated, but in these 13 pa patients, we had the clinical, clinical curse before, before treatment, and these patients, patients, patients had multiple metastatic relapses in the two years before, before starting the treatment. And after starting the treatment, we observed only three relapses within the third years. And this is a clearly uh, statistically significant reduction of metastatic relapses. So these are prom promising data, but this is, of course, an early development, and much, has, much more has, has to, to be done to compare this type of treatment to existing treatment. I will show you some of the challenges ahead. When we started, when we started uh, the vaccine, vaccine uh, uh, manufacturing in 2014, we had, we had to deal with strict uh, manufacture laws for manufacturing of drug products. You need a lot of documentation for that, a lot of paperwork. 
and manufacturing has to be done in clean rooms with uh, with, uh, with with coming coming additional uh, with uh, with SOPs and documentation. Usually, this type of work is done for products that are applied to 100 or thousands of patients. We had now the challenge to deal with the same type of challenge for every individual patient. This was the reason why we were able only to treat 13 patients at that time. In the meantime, we have, we have developed, further developed our approach. We, are, we have now a paper, paperless electronic documentation in place. We have a semi-automated manufacturing in place, and the development of a vaccine is now can be accomplished in less than six weeks, and we can treat up to thousands of patients. So we are continuing to develop this approach. The next step is asking the question, can we attach to this type of thinking, to this type of individualization, other forms of cancer immunotherapy treatment beyond vaccines, cell therapies, antibodies, small molecules. And we, are, we started to, to provide an armada of molecules that can be combined with this vaccine to specifically empower uh, patients' specific T cells to, to, to further attack the tumor cells. So we are currently in development, but what is the, what is the long, long-term vision of this development? The key question is, the key question is, if every patient's tumor is unique, which is the case, can we bring this innovation to every cancer patient? We are confident that this could be done. We are confident not only based on our abilities, but we are confident because we can, we can leverage innovations coming from different fields. So this is the typical process which is required to make an individual vaccine. Get a sample, profile the, uh, the, uh, the sample. We can use deep genomic profiling innovations allowing us not only to analyze the tumor but also the single cells. We are using, we are, we are exploiting the technologies for, uh, 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 for, um, for machine learning and artificial intelligence to profile the patient's data and add additional information coming from different sources. We have, in the meantime, developed different approaches that are exploitable to make, to make immunotherapy that can precisely uh, uh, exploit this information uh, to target mutations and other genetic changes in the tumor. And most importantly, we need to provide this type of treatments just in time. And, and here, we can exploit technologies like automation uh, uh, 4.0, zero digit, di digital manufacturing. Our aim is to, to improve this type of treatment in iterative cycles and increase the number of patients that can, can be addressed. I believe bringing technologies together for the sake of individual patients, have been individual patients, is the best thing what innovation can do. Thank you for your attention.